Tonight, a different viewpoint of the Democratic National Convention as it kicks off in Milwaukee. This is the city's skyline, though. No one is speaking at the convention this year. No one's there. The event is virtual this time around with some live and some taped speeches. Among those on deck tonight, Senator Bernie Sanders, former First Lady Michelle Obama, and former Ohio Governor Republican John Kasich. The hoopla is gone. No balloons, no roaring crowds, or real-time political drama. So, how would this all look? Brandon Simmons, a political convention veteran, has that story. Tonight, the Democratic National Convention kicks off, likely the most unconventional convention in the event's history. There's no blueprint or playbook on how to run these campaigns virtually. In 2016, Philadelphia's Wells Fargo Arena was packed with DNC attendees, ready to nominate the party's selection for president. This year in Milwaukee, an entirely different scene, a mostly technical setup with a small staff to make it all work. Also have technical staff working across the country, some from their homes or different studios. And now we have speakers coming from all across the country. Instead of media members descending on Milwaukee like we saw in Cleveland four years ago, the production team will be sending a shared feed to almost every media platform you can think of. Whether using a computer or mobile device, Apple TV to Roku, YouTube, Facebook, and even Alexa-enabled devices, you'll be able to hear from all the party's biggest names, minus the crowded arena. Tonight's headliner, former First Lady Michelle Obama. But how do you keep that same excitement and convention-like atmosphere in a virtual setting? There may be a little bit of a feeling of disappointment around not being able to gather um, in person. Absolutely. People are going to miss that person-to-person -person connection, but we are doing our best to fill that void with uh, so many other activities. In years past, a convention included a who's who of political greats at private events, networking in arena concourses, and major productions driving excitement for delegates to take back to their home states. The pandemic has hampered a lot of that. But party leaders say it's still an important part of the process. This convention, while it's not in person, it is going to be, I anticipate, one of the best ever. Now, many of these changes are bipartisan. Republicans kick off their convention next week in a virtual setting. Russ, this is nothing like the time we spent traveling city to city back in 2012 and 2016. <laughs> I actually missed that just a little bit. Yeah, I, I do too, Brandon. As you said, you, myself, uh, John Atkins, our news content co uh, director, we covered those conventions in 2016 and 2012. I'm going to miss it as well. In, you, I saw you talk to Chantel Brown a second ago. She thinks this is going to be the best ever uh, in terms of, of excitement. What do you think? Yeah, I think it will be uh, it'll be exciting because it's different. And uh, that photo that was just on the screen, I wanted you to take a look at that. That was us back in 2012 as we covered that event in Tampa and uh, covered it in Charlotte and uh, also in Philadelphia here in Cleveland. One thing I do want to point out, though, is that th some of those interviews you saw in the story, those happened at times when we really didn't have access to that main stage. They happened in those other events that happened outside of the convention. So I think that's the part that we'll miss most this yeah, year, Russ. I'm going to miss you muscling out all those folks at, at gaggles as we try to get those interviews as you showed in your interview there with the <laughs> with the late John Lewis so yeah so so great times gonna miss him my friend thank you so much